Let's just start recording. Okay, so manual editing. Um, so what I was thinking for um, for this session is just basically showing my setup and um, just editing uh, the manual as I normally do it. Um, so if you don't know me, my name is Caroline Serlaros. I work at Inibro in um, Quebec, Canada, which is a support company for Koha. Um, I've been working there since uh, 2017. Um, and before that, I worked in a public library. Um, and I'm currently the documentation manager for this cycle. <clears throat> Um, this is not going to be a getting started workshop. Um, David Nin did one yesterday that was very good, and I think it's on YouTube. It was live streamed, so um, I don't know if it was recorded, but uh, it was live streamed. So um, hopefully it's on YouTube. Otherwise, maybe he's going to do another one eventually. Um, all right, so I'll, sh I'll start by showing you um, my setup. So <clears throat> all the information is on, by the way, I don't see the chat uh, when I'm not in the, in the window. So if you have anything to ask, um, you can maybe open your mic and ask me. So all the information is on the wiki. And I just search for editing manual and it's the first one that comes up. Editing the Koha manual. And my setup is um, this one uh, here. Editing the manual using a local repository and editor. Um, so this is, uh, I wrote this part <laughs> and it is the uh, how I did my setup. Um, it was with the, the help of my Git sensei, uh, Charles Farmer. Um, who, who helped me a lot uh, learning Git and getting this set up. So um, all the steps are here. And this is my workflow that I use, and that's what I'm going to be doing today. So let me just open whoops, a terminal. And maybe for reference, I can show my... Um, Wait, I'm just going to go to All right. Oops. Oh boy. All right, so this is my con config, my configuration for git. Um, <clears throat> so what I do is I work with two remotes. I have my remote origin here, um, and this is uh, linked to my own uh, fork of the manual. And then I have another remote that I called community, and this is linked to uh, the Koha community um, Git like on GitLab. So these are the two um, remotes that I use. And how I do it is basically, um, I'm going to go to, I'm going to git checkout. I'm going to make, make this a bit bigger so you can see. Um, git checkout community, community master. So community master is my, is what I called my master branch from the community remote. And I git pull. So what this this does is that it takes all the the new things that were added to the manual, and it pulls it um, on my uh, local branch. And then what I do is I git checkout master. So my this is my master for my own fork. And what I do is I git merge community master. So this puts it up to date with all the latest, um, all the latest uh, changes that were made in the community version. So this is basically um, the equivalent of mirroring on GitLab, but uh, I do it this way. 
And then, um, so I'm going to leave that there. Then the next thing that I do is that I go on Taiga, um, which is our um, task manager for the documentation team. Um, if you need an invite on this, just um, you can send us an email and we'll add you. And I'm just going to look for something to change. So yesterday I was working on tools um, here and I haven't <laughs> finished it yet, but um, I'll try this one. So option not to show CSV profiles in OPAC. Um, this is the Taiga number and this is the Bugzilla number. And there's a link to the Bugzilla here so we can open this and see what this is about. So, um, currently CSV profiles defined in staff are shown in the pull down of download options in OPAX cart. I would like an option to show um, to only show those CSV profiles in staff. More complex but even better would be a system where I can define for each CSV profile whether it will be shown in the OPAC or only in staff. So this is the, the starting point of this development. And then what I usually do is I go at the bottom completely and go up and see if there's a test plan. So here Thomas did a, a very thorough um, test plan. So <clears throat> Um, I don't have to do these because this is just for testing. In staff side, go to tool CSV profile, make a CSV profile with profile type, mark and usage, blah, blah. Leave show option in OPAC unchecked and save. Go to OPAC and add item to your cart, click cart, click download, blah, blah, blah. Go back and edit CSV profile on staff side. Check the show option in OPAC, checkbox and save, go back. Okay. All right. So um, this is what we have to do to see what this is about. So since it's a new feature, I, I've never seen it before. Um, so what I usually do is I try it <laughs> before writing about it. Um, I do have a uh, master or main um, development uh, version installed on my computer. If you don't have one, you can use a sandbox, um, which is basically the, the same thing. Um, so we had to go into tools. Make a CSV profile. Okay, so CSV profile. Okay, so profile name, I'm going to do um, gonna do 100, 245, oops, 264, okay, I'm just going to do this. Oh, yeah. And then um, leave show option in OPAC unchecked and save. So I noticed that if I go here, so this is the one that I just did. Um, the, the thing is not exactly the same. So here it says only available on the staff interface. So it's a bit different, but um, so I'm going to check this. And then I have to go to my OPAC. Um, and then what was it? It was add something to your cart. Yeah. Okay, so 
at my cart and then I go in my cart and I try to export this using um, so here I have this CSV simple record but I don't have the one that I just made which is record export and if I check uh, uncheck And I go back to my cart. Uh, actually, I'll close it completely. And I do download, so I have it here. All right, so that's how it works. Um, now I can go and write about it. Um, <clears throat> so if you were at David's um, workshop yesterday, you saw that, um, so if I do list here, um, so this is a copy of uh, the manual and all the um, chapters of the manual are in the source um, directory. So they're all here. Um, and so I'm going to go and work in the tools, which is this one. And I'm going to use my, uh, I use Sublime Text. Uh, to to edit, so I'm just going to open this in Sublime. Okay, so I already have a bunch of things open here. Um, all right. Oh yeah, first, first, I have to. So now I'm on my master branch um, because I checked out master. I have to uh, create either create a new branch or use one that I already have. I have already a bunch, so I don't know if I have one for tools. Yeah. So I have one for tools. Um, now this is not up to date. So what I would do is I would git merge master. I'm going to show you, I have a, something that's called git k. Um, and it's something that um, I can't make it bigger, sorry. Um, so it really helped me a lot when I was learning Git because uh, you can see all your branches, the green things are all your branches. And if I go, for example, whoops, sorry. If I go, for example, I get checkout master and I refresh here. So I would be here at the top. See, master is in, in bold. So this is where I'm at. And tools is down here. So I have to put it up to date with this one. So I don't, um, so I, I ha have all these um, commits that were done since I did this branch. Whoops. So I'm going to get checkout tools. And then I'm going to. I'm going to git merge master. Oh, crap. Okay. Okay, so what I'm going to do, I'm just going to delete this branch. Tools. I'm not a git master, so obviously. <laughs> Can I do it checked out? Why am I checked out on it? Oh. Status. Okay. Git merge abort. All right. There's no merge to work. Okay. Get checkout tools. Get checkout master. Okay, so if there's no merge to abort, why are you? The joys of Git. Okay, 
So I'm just going to create another one. So if I go here, so this I, del I deleted my branch tools because it was just too complicated to 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 put it up to date. So as you can see, it's not here anymore. So I'm just going to put this and I'm going to create another one. Switch to a new branch. So now if I go back to my git k, you see that it's here now. So I know that I'm up to date on everything on this branch. So this is a great tool to visualize how git works because sometimes it can be a bit abstract for us non-developers. <clears throat> All right, so I'm now on my branch tools. So now I can go here and modify what I want. So I am in tools and I want to find CSV profiles. Okay. And what I usually do um, when I when I'm working on a change like this one, um, I review the whole thing. So this is, I'm just a perfectionist and you, you absolutely don't have to do it like that, but that's how I do it. So I, I like to review everything, make sure everything is up to date, not just add whatever I was going to add. So um, it starts here. So this part, um, the label part, um, this is a comment, but it works as a link, like an anchor link. If you if you've ever worked in HTML, this this would be like an anchor. Um, so this is used to um, link back uh, in other pages to this section of CSV profiles. So this is what the label is for. Um, and then the this is the title. This is the um, this is just to indicate that it's a heading, and I'm gonna go back here to the editing manual um, wiki page, and at the bottom there's a, a section that's called um, restructured text tips and tricks, and this is this is the um, the syntax that is used. In the um, in the manual, so as you can see, headings have different characters um, depending on on the heading level. So um, a heading one would be an equal sign. Heading two would be a dash. Heading three would be a, a tilde. I think it's called. Um, I don't know how that's called in English. Um, so. I'll just call it the hat, and this is an apostrophe. So if I go back to my uh, thing, so I see that uh, this these are tilds, and um, this means that it's a heading level three. All right, so get there, more tools, blah, blah, that's good. CSV profiles are created to define how you would like your cart or list to export. Well, it's not only that, but let's say that that's it. And then I have um, the hat heading, which is the fourth uh, level heading, add CSV profiles. To add a CSV profile, click CSV profiles from the tools menu. Well, I'm already there, so I'm just gonna remove that because I'm already get there more tools, additional tools, CSV profiles, so I don't really have to click again. Um, okay, so. I, I do have to click new CSV profile though. So, and the um, little dash space space, those are for bullet points. So click on, what's it called? New CSV profile. Right. Okay, so I'm just gonna, the profile name, 
So I like to go in the same order. So now here it starts with profile type, which was probably the case um, back when this was written. That was the first one, but now it's the second one and profile name is the first one. So I'm just gonna take this, these lines and bring them up here. Okay. And okay. So the profile name will appear on the export pull down list when choosing download from your cart or list. Okay, that makes sense. Um, here there is an image. Um, images are used uh, like this. So this uh, with the pipes is an alias and it goes back to, there's another file. Um, I have all of them here. So there's another file called images.rst, which is here. And this is just a list of all the aliases and all the images where they, um, like the path to the exact image. So this image is 378. So I like to look also at the images, make sure they're still good. What's the number that I said? 378. Whoops. Find 378. Okay, so this is the one. It's in images, tools, CSV profiles, download csv.png. So I'm just going to go in here. I have it also in my file explorer. Um, so images, tools. What was it again? CSV profiles and download CSV. So as you can see, this looks quite old. Well, not quite old, but older. Let's see, <laughs> let's say. Um, so I'm gonna redo a screen capture of this because I think it would, it could look better. So um, basically what I have to do is go in here, go in my cart. And then kind of bugs me that it's like flush on the side, but whatever. Um, so I'm going to take my, this, this is a tool that I use for, um, screen captures. So I either use uh, shutter, which is the, the, this external tool, or um, I use Firefox as my browser and there's uh, take a screenshot. So I could use this also. This one is nice because it, it, it selects already what, um, what you could want. And then you can just, so this is what it looked like. Yeah. Download list, yeah, anyway. Um, yeah, I'm gonna use the other one though. This one is nice because you can have a delay. <laughs> so um, I'm just gonna select, well, I could select the whole thing, I guess. There you go, and I'm gonna just put my cursor on it and I'll have my cursor um, on where I want where I want it. Okay, so goes in my downloads, so it's here. What I do when I just replace a an image, it's not a new image. Um, so I don't have to create anything new. I just copy the same name and I name this one the same. And then I just drop it in there and I say replace. So when I'm going to commit this change, um, this is the image that's going to be committed with my change. So I don't have to do anything else if I just want to replace a, an image. That's all I have to do. Um, 
also um, from uh, Julius's talk uh, on, I think it was Wednesday morning, um, he talked about adding alt text to images. Right now, it's it's not done at all in the uh, in the manual. I found out how to do it. Um, it hasn't been voted on by the documentation team, but I'll just add it anyway. Um, I'm sure no one's going to be against it. So what I do is I uh, just underneath the 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 image that I'm checking. Um, I enter colon, alt, colon, and then I enter whatever the text is. And he said, uh, if I remember correctly, it's not necessary to write photo of or picture of. So I'm just going to say, uh, I'm really not good at alt text. Um, so what was my image? Uh, okay, so view of the cart with the download pull down menu open. And see, I'm going to put it in like this CSV record export is selected. Hopefully, this helps someone. <laughs> um, like I said, I'm really not good at coming up with texts like this. All right, so this is. The profile name will appear, blah, blah, blah. Great, so now that's done. I can close. No, I'm not going to close this. I'm going to close this one. All right, so profile type, I have either Mark or SQL. The profile type determines what type of fields you want, you plan to use, Mark or SQL, to define your profile. That's fine. If you choose mark, then you will need to enter mark fields. Image 376. So 376 is add CSV. Yeah, OK, I'm going to redo that one too, because it looks old. So um, I like to make my screen a little uh, bit smaller when I do screen captures. That way the um, I can take the whole thing and it's not like a humongous image. All right, so this one was called add CSV. No. Okay. Place. All right, and now I have to come up with an alt text again. Alt, whoops. Um, add new CSV profile form. I guess that's that's what it is. I'm just gonna put this. So when you um, when you edit, you want the whatever's under the whatever's aligned with the text of the bullet is in the in that bullet. So that one was a bit um, at the back, so it would have been like under this bullet. So we don't want that. We want it to be with this one. But why is this here? If you choose mark, then you will need to enter mark fields. Wait. Let me check with. 
Okay, it was already filled in. Hmm. Okay. Okay, so what I'm going to do, I'm going to use the CSV, add CSV one, the plain one that I took, which was 376. I'm going to put it up under this one. And then I can um, add pictures for each one if I need to. Okay, so I'm going to go in here. I'm going to take a mark one that already exists. Hmm. Yeah, no, maybe I should create another one. So, um, oops, simple export. So, and now I'm going to, so this is a new image that I'm adding. Why is this not, oh, okay. So I'm just going to call it, um, here we have add CSV SQL. So I'm going to call it add CSV dash mark. All right. So when we add a new image, uh, we have to add it in this long list in images.rst. So you can just copy the, the syntax that's above it um, and uh, just increase the number by one. It's not the ideal way of doing it, but it's how it's been done and it's it would be too long to change. Tools, CSV profiles, that's what it is, right? CSV profiles and then add CSV mark. PNG. Okay, and then I'm going to add my alt. Um, and that is... Um, new CSV profile form filled with mark information. And then I can put it here with that same number. So this is the alias that we use in the text. making sure it's aligned with the text that I want it to be associated with. So that's how you add an image. If you choose SQL, then you will need to enter, enter SQL database fields. So 377, that was this one. Okay, so I'll just copy the same thing. You don't always have to invent new things. You can just copy whatever's there. By the author equals yo dot author. Then year equals biblio. 
copyright date. Now I just take a screenshot of this. Boop. Download. And now, so this one is just to replace this. So copy and replace, and that's done. Just going to go add my alt text. Um, add new CSV profile form filled with SQL information. And don't forget to save your work once in a while. All right, so next. Uh, So next one I have is usage. So is it here? No. Okay, so I'm just gonna add a new bullet. Sorry, I just noticed that this this is a sub sub point of this one. So okay. Oh yeah, and another thing that I'm a bit perfectionist about, and that's absolutely just me, it's not in any role or anything, but um, I'm sure you noticed that um, a lot of the... a lot of the lines don't go all the way to the end, so this is called wrapping, line wrapping, and there are different preferences or whatever for that and I usually line wrap at 80 characters so I'm just going to put this here and I also I'm a bit anal about this so I'm just going to put this up to 80 and that again is really just me <laughs> I'm just really I like everything to be just so Okay, and then I can describe the different ones. So,
Okay, and then the next one is late serial issues claims. So late serial issues claims, this is used in the acquisitions um, module. So I'll, I'm going to put a link from this section here to the acquisitions module. Um, this is used to export um, late issues of serial subscriptions. So I'm going to put the link under um, export late issues of serial subscriptions. So what I do is um, this is a specific syntax and it's colon ref colon backtick. So this is uh, for reference and then backtick indicates the start of the reference. And then um, you put the label. So do I have the acquisitions open somewhere here? I don't know. Uh, no, it's not acquisitions. It's serials. Serials. Um, late. Claim late serials. So it's probably somewhere in here. So since I want to link directly to um, this section, what I do is I copy the label here. So you don't have to copy the, the underscore or the colon, just the words parts. And you put this in between um, those little triangle brackets. And then you put another back tick. So this indicates the end of the link. Um, and the, the reason why it's done like this is because um, this section is what will appear and this is the reference, so where it links to. And when we translate, um, this part here will be translated, but this one will not have to be translated. So it's important to, to use the to use the two like this for translation. So late serial issue claims only blah, blah, blah. Okay, so that's good. Next is export late orders. Again, only available. So again, I'm going to put the reference here and then I'm going to go find the reference uh, that's administration acquisitions. Claims and late orders. So I'm just going to copy this. Uh, whoops. Okay. 
Oops. And then basket export and acquisition. Oops, a level. I'm actually going to copy this. Pretty self explanatory basket export in acquisition. It's to export your basket in acquisitions. <laughs> um, this is used to download um, records from baskets from your acquisitions baskets. Let's see. Um, so if I go back in acquisitions, I'll try to see if there's any mention of this anywhere. Probably be, yeah, create a basket order. Well, uh, yeah, that's a long section. So, I don't know if you see here, but here there's a reference, and there's just the back tick, and then the text and back tick. So this is okay because this is a system preference and it doesn't change in translation. So the, the system preferences always stay in English. So this is okay. It will still be okay in translation, but only for system preferences. Um, hmm. Export a CSV. It's here, but okay. I'm gonna link to create a basket. Next, export lost items in report. Oops. Export lost items in report. So this is used to export a CSV from the lost items report. And this is going to be in reports. I'm just going to try to find lost items. There we go. Okay, so I think that's it. Yay. Okay, so the profile description is for your own benefit. It will also appear in the OPAC when patrons download content. So make sure it's clear um, to your patrons as well. I would say for your patrons, but I'm not a native English speaker, so I won't change it.
Okay, so then the CSV separator is the character used to separate values and value groups. Note, the most common option here is comma because most spreadsheet applications know how to open files split by commas. So yeah, nothing more to say in there. Oh, hi, David. <laughs> um, so what for for your patrons? Okay, th okay, thanks. No, no, go ahead, go ahead. Oh, really? Oh, they have to be on one line? Like this? Okay. Okay, well, it's good to know. Okay. Okay, well, let me know. All right. Uh, where was I? Field separator. Oh yeah, field separator is the character used to separate duplicate subfields. Example, you may have multiple dollar $A subfields in the field. Okay. Then encoding field lets you define the encoding used when saving the file. Yeah. Is there anything else when I switch? No. Okay. All right, so um, now this is what we wanted to add. And I noticed while I was uh, switching that it's only available in the mark because Patrons will never have to export any of these things. So it's kind of um, implied that it's only in the staff interface. So it's really only this that's um, only available. Okay, so this is only for mark profile types. And I'm going to try to keep the same um, sentence style. So the na 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 um, check box. Let's you um, limit this file to interface only meaning patrons will not be able to use this profile to Right. Um, finally, format and that was it, right? Yeah. Okay. Finally, format your CSV pro, uh, file using the profile mark or profile SQL field. It's actually called profile mark fields, so I'm going to change that. And is it also yeah? Or profile SQL fields. And instead of field, I'm going to change it to box, <laughs> just so it's not like fields field. Um, define which fields or subfields you want to export separated by pipes. Example, na na na, for mark, I'm going to put or here, or na 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 for SQL. No, you can also use your own headers instead of the ones from Koha by prefixing the field number with a, head, with 
a header followed by the equal sign. Example, personal name equals uh, 100, sorry, title 245, okay. Um, now, this I'm going to put at the beginning because I don't know why it's indented. When you have entered in all the, of the information for your profile, maybe that's, <laughs> I'm guessing that's, that's me that who wrote this the first time because I always make this error for your profile. Simply click submit and you will be presented with a confirmation that your profile has been saved. So let's try this. CSV profile added successfully. All right, and image 380. Was 379 somewhere in there? 379. Oh, it's, it's like never used. Oh yeah, there it is. Is the character used to separate? Yeah, yeah. I wanted to talk about it at the next uh, docs meeting, see what we want to do. For now, what I was going to propose is just do the ones that we add or the ones that we change. Um, yeah, it's. I mean, we're at over uh, 1,500 images, so <laughs> unless there's a volunteer to do that... Uh, um okay so 379 is csv field sep so i seem to have um oh yeah that's fine so i skipped that image but it looks fine i'm not gonna redo that so but i'm gonna add an alt text to it Oops. Yeah. alt um, CSV file opened in a spread, oops, software where we can see the, are they pipes? Yeah, pipes separating um, subjects, subject headings when there are, when there are more than one. Okay. All right, so hopefully this is clear enough. Uh, where was I? Okay. Oh yeah, was it image 380? Image 380. So this is CSV added. This new CSV profile na -na -na, has been successfully created. Yeah, I think I'll redo it because it's not the same text. So I'm just gonna... Whoops. And again, alt. Um, do we need to know that's a blue box? I don't know. Um, with the confirmation message. And what is it? CSV profile. Okay. 
All right. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, we'll have to redo the images then in that case. So, yeah. Okay, so that was one section. So I'm going to save everything that I did. Images, tools, everything. Now, um, once I'm done with that, I can do git status. And I can see everything that has changed on my branch. So I have images.rst. I have a couple of... Um, uh, images that were changed. I have tools and I also have this new image and then the the other ones are just things I'm working on that don't have anything to do with with this change in particular. So I want to do git add um, and I don't know if there's a another way to do this but I like to do it um, one by one, just to make sure that I add the right things. Tools. Then I can do git status again, and it's going to show me what I'm committing. So the, the green ones are what I'm going to be adding to the manual. The red ones are going to stay just on my computer, and they won't um, be committed. So that's what I wanted, and that's okay that it's still there. Um, and then when I'm, once I'm done with that, I do git commit. I do um, dash m to add a message. So I'm going to do taiga. Whoop, whoop. What was the taiga number? 1426. Whoops. Sorry. I'm used to working with more than one uh, workspaces. And I'm just going to copy that. I think that's good. So it's telling me that I've committed this to my branch tools. And um, now I can git push. And this will push to my, um, my fork of the manual. So as you can see here, it says um, GitLab, Caroline Salahos, Koha Manual, blah, blah, blah. So what I have to do is go there. I don't know if I can, I'll just copy that. And so you can copy the, this or um, you can simply go to your, um, your, your GitLab account and your own fork of the manual and here at the top it says you push to tools na 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 just now and create a merge request. So it goes to the same place. And this is um, the title of the merge request. You can put in a description if you want to. Um, I'm going to put also review of the add CSV profile section. Um, and then you don't have to fill in anything of the rest of this and then just click Submit Merge Request. And that's it. So it took me about an hour to do one. <laughs> but like I said, I'm very... Um, um, I don't want to say anal about things, but I am a little bit. So um, I like to do things, you know, in a certain way. And 
it takes a bit more time when I do it like that. So I'm just going to check if there are. Um, okay, so a while ago, Chris asked, is, uh, is it all working okay? So yes. George says it's called a carrot. Thank you. Um, I think a hat is a nice word too, but um, okay. So I didn't see the chat while I while I was on on the other screen, so I'm just catching up on your comments. So did anyone have uh, questions? It's really just like I I was saying. It's just a live stream of me, you know, talking while I do what I usually do. Um, so yeah, that was it. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah, well, if it's easy to do, I mean... Uh... Yeah, and I, I sometimes I also say things, you know, like, oh, we do this because blah, 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 and maybe someone didn't know that part, so... Um, yeah, so I hope that was instructive, um, and it was a bit long. I don't think anyone is going to watch it on YouTube, but we'll see. <laughs> World famous streamer. <laughs> All right, so I'm going to stop this here. I'm going to um, stop the recording.